Hey y'all, so this is gonna be the video for Friday, the 23rd. Uh, gonna be doing some volume review today. Uh, nice thing about these is they're pretty straightforward formulas. Uh, you will have access to them on the test. Uh, it's gonna be in your notes. I might even write them on the whiteboard. Um, so first off, we got volume of a rectangular prism. Looking right, here's your formula. Length times width times height. So they ask you for volume. We're gonna multiply the length times the width, times the height. So volume, length, times width, times height. Eight times five is 40. 40 times three is 120. So your volume right here is gonna be 120 inches cubed. All right, pretty straightforward. On to the next one. Uh, we got volume of a sphere. It's gonna be this formula right here. I'm gonna rewrite it a little bit larger. I'm doing a video right now. This is for my class tomorrow. Okay, we got four thirds pi r cubed, right? Where r is gonna be the radius of that sphere we're looking at. So we got, it says, this is actually a typo. So you can go ahead, cross this out. That should say, find the volume of the sphere, right? This isn't a rectangle, this is a, this is a sphere. Uh, round to the nearest hundredth. Now, you're gonna wanna use um, does it say, doesn't say anything about pi. So for pi, we can just use the pi button in the calculator. And then for your radius here, we're going to be using six. So volume, we've got four thirds times pi. I remember the, uh, four thirds is next to the pi. There's no plus or minus in between there. That means it's being multiplied together, right? In the same way, it's also being multiplied by the radius cubed. Okay. And our radius is going to be six, and that is going to be cubed. All right. And again, on the calculator, that would be the same thing as doing times six times six times six. This would be another way you could enter this into the calculator. Four thirds times pi times six times six times six. Okay. My cousins are in the background. I hope they're not being too loud. Bear with me. Okay. So as far as finding the volume here, uh, at that point, we can go ahead, punch that into a calculator, and that is going to give us 288 pi, or as a decimal, rounded to the nearest hundredth, it's going to be 904.78 centimeters cubed. All right. And nearest hundredth, right, that's talking about two decimal places. So after the decimal, we got one, two. And then again, now we're talking about volume. It's always going to be that unit and then cubed. So our units here, we've got centimeters. So our units for volume are going to be centimeters cubed. All right, next we've got cylinder. Again, it's another formula. Um, it'll be good to have it memorized. It makes it a little bit easier to just we call off the top of your head, but if you don't, no big deal. You're going to have access to it on the test. Um, so we got the volume of a cylinder. We got pi times the radius squared times the height. All right. So when we talk about the radius, we are talking about the radius of this circle down here. So it's that two. That two is your radius. And then the height, that is your height, that five. All right, and then the two is your radius. So our volume here, we've got pi times two squared times five, right? Because the radius was two and the height was five. Well, remember squaring, right? That's just multiplying by itself. So that's two times two, All right? So we can simplify this if we want. And it's not that big of a deal. You could punch it into your calculator too, but you could say pi times four times five, and again, You'll take that straight to the calculator, multiply that out, and it wants again, rounding to the nearest hundredth, so that's two decimal places, and that's going to give us an answer of 62.83. And again, don't forget your units, it's always going to be cubed, so centimeters cubed. All right. One more formula we got to review. Hopefully, maybe these are a little familiar from integrated one or two. Um, but for cone, we've got, uh, it's very similar, if you notice, to cylinder, right? Cylinder, we've got 
pi r squared times the height. For a cone, we've got pi r squared times the height divided by 3. That's the only difference. For a cone, it's the same thing as a cylinder. You're just going to divide by 3 there at the end. Other than that, it's your same steps. So notice here, we've got this radius here, right? That's our radius. And then also, this is the height. This is what's really important here is sometimes they're not going to give you that actual height. The height is the one that's straight up and down. S, this little like slanted height, it's at an angle. We're actually going to have to use Pythagorean theorem to get the height that we want to use in our volume formula. All right, so if you remember your Pythagorean theorem, your Pythagorean theorem is leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. All right. And remember the two legs on this triangle, we got this 90 degree angle right here. The two legs are the sides that are touching that 90 degree angle. So it's, we've got the three squared and the H squared. And then the hypotenuse, hypotenuse is this side over here, this seven. The seven squared is the side that is opposite that right angle. So honestly, I wish in the example they had given us one where we didn't have to deal with the slant height. Um, but I guess you're getting the hard example first, where we were given that slant and we actually have to figure out what the real height is to use in our volume formula. And again, whenever that happens, it's just going to be Pythagorean theorem every time. Um, so let's go ahead and finish solving this. So remember, squaring a number is the same thing as multiplying it by itself. So 3 squared is 9, got plus 8 squared equals, and then 7 squared, right? Multiplying by itself, 7 times 7, that's 49. All right, so let's solve for h here. I'm going to subtract that 9 on both sides. h squared equals 40. Last step here, take the square root of both sides. So you've got h equals the square root of 40. All right, we're not going to make a big deal about simplifying that. I know some of you, you might say, oh, this simplifies to 2 times the square root of 10. Don't worry about that right now. As far as volume is concerned, we're going to eventually end up rounding our answer anyways. So you, whenever you have square roots, you don't need to worry about simplifying square roots. It's going to get you to the same answer either way. So I say save the time. Don't worry about simplifying. But just for um, in, in case you are noticing, yes, this does simplify to 2 square root of 10. Okay. So now we finally got our height, right? Because remember, we had to use Pythagorean theorem so we could get this height here. So let's go ahead plug that into the volume formula. All right, so now we can use this formula up here. So we've got pi times the radius, right? We knew what the radius is, This the radius of that base circle, right? That's this circle right here. That radius is 3. So the radius is 3. So instead of r squared, we're going to plug in 3 times the height. That's what we just solved for. That's that square root of 40 number. Or 2 root 10, it's the same thing either way square root of 40. And then again, don't forget, when it's a cone, you got to divide by 3. Divide by 3. And that, as is, you don't need to worry about trying to simplify by hand. Yes, it does simplify a little bit, but all you're doing is you're punching this into the calculator. So you don't need to worry about trying to simplify it first. The calculator is going to do all that dirty work for you. Um, so you're going to have pi times 3 squared times root 40 over 3. And that is going to give you an answer of about 59.61 meters cubed. Notice this time, right, we got meters rather than centimeters. So it's going to be meters cubed. And there you go. There is your answer for the volume of that cone. Same thing as cylinder, just divide it by three. The part that makes it tricky is when they give you this outer edge. They give you this slant height rather than the actual vertical up and down height because we need to do that extra step. We need to use Pythagorean theorem to get the actual height. Once we get that actual height, it's the same thing. All right, next video, um, I'm going to do a few of the problems in the worksheet. And we can see another example where we have to use Pythagorean theorem, and I'll do one where we don't as well. And as always, reach out to me if you have any questions.